My memory is very hazy around my first few experiences with video games. I know I poured hours into Pokemon Red, but beyond that, there are only patchy memories of random games on the PS1 and PC like James Bond Tomorrow Never Dies. I wonder what it would feel like if I ever saw you again. Ah! Now I know. Seriously, that is one of the few games I remember owning for the PS1. Perhaps I was too invested in Pokemon, or perhaps I didn't master the art of persuading my parents to buy me new games until later on in life. I once explained to my mum in detail the revolutionary new mechanics of FIFA 2005 over its predecessors in the middle of Blockbuster, explaining how it was like nothing ever seen before in a football game. Like, wow, wouldn't that be fun to play? And it actually worked, somehow. Anyway, my point is, my first console was the PS1, which was never really any good for 2D platformers. My first hands-on experience with platformers were of the 3D variety, games like Spyro and Crash Bandicoot rather than Super Mario or Sonic. All classic games in their own right, but also very different. And I think it's because of this that I've never really been fond of 2D platformers. But let me tell you, these two games have completely changed my mind. Ori and the Blind Forest and Hollow Knight look so good and play so well that they almost hide how bad I am at platformers. I mean, almost. But we'll get on to that later. Let's look at the platformers you can play in Xbox Game Pass. Ori and the Blind Forest was released in 2015 as the debut from game developer Moon Studios. You play as the spirit Ori, who is separated from the spirit tree in a great storm. The creature Naru saves Ori from certain death, choosing to raise her as her own in the forest. But as the forest slowly but inevitably deteriorates, Naru starves to death and Ori is left alone. So like, right off the bat, you're faced with love, loss, and separation in a backdrop of climate change. It makes the opening to Up look like a walk in the park, you know, before the trees in that park are all destroyed so we can have extra soft toilet paper. Despite the rather heart-wrenching opening, playing through Ori emits a sense of calm. It's a game that seems very at peace with itself. You drift through ethereal settings, through vibrant and colourful backdrops with beautiful foreground animations blended in and a blissful orchestral soundtrack. Ori and the Blind Forest is graceful through its patience while refusing to ever feel slow. The game is happy to drip feed you new abilities as you progress. Almost every time I felt like I had mastered one ability, it would drop in a new one that completely changed how to manoeuvre around the map. I guess this is pretty standard for a platformer, but I definitely feel that deliberate care has been given to Ori's learning curve and sense of progression. Whole new areas of the map are opened up to you. The game feels completely different playing now as it did at the beginning. You save by creating soul links, checkpoints that instantly transport you back to them whenever you die. They're quick and easy, which is the perfect recipe for a platformer. And because you use up energy to create them, you're also prevented from saving constantly and removing any sense of tension and achievement. It also means that you have to save manually, which is the most infuriating thing in the world. That was all for nothing. Oh, I've gone. Oh my god. <sighs> Ori and the Blind Forest isn't the biggest game but it hides that with levels that seamlessly weave together. The map is an extension of this, but when you're using it practically, you know, to actually make your way around, it doesn't work as well. The map symbols are very hard to differentiate between, which doesn't bode well with my tendency to constantly second guess if I'm going the right way. 
Every time I was looking at the map, I had to first pull up the map legend and figure out what the symbols meant before I could decide whether that's where I wanted to go. Over time, I'm sure you start to remember what these symbols mean, but to me, it could have just been that little bit clearer from the start. Admittedly, this is a very minor problem to have, and when you put that to the side, Ori and the Blind Forest is a perfect example of how to pace a platformer, immediately drawing you in, moving you serenely through the first hour, showing you the ropes before delivering on dramatic and thrilling platforming sections. Please don't think I completed this in one go, it took me at least 20 minutes. It's got me very excited for the sequel coming next year and oh my god it has autosave. Also, it's published by Microsoft Studios as an Xbox One and PC exclusive, so I take back a bit of what I said about you Microsoft in my last video, and I'm sorry, and please don't sue me. You won't get anything like the opening to Ori and the Blind Forest with Hollow Knight, but that doesn't make its story any less enthralling. Hollow Knight tells the tale of a knight on a quest to uncover an underground kingdom, saving its inhabitants that have succumbed to the sickly air beneath the well. Hollow Knight is grounded in exploration, leaving you free to make your own path and explore the submerged kingdom as you choose. You start in the dank and dark forgotten crossroads, and without a map or any form of guidance, the first minutes are spent trying to figure out where you are and where you should go. You're not left completely in the dark. The strange bug, Cornifer, will sell you his own scribblings of map sections, if you can find him. And you can buy items like the compass that puts your cursor on the map, and the quill which will fill in newly discovered areas. Both are vital if you want to have any bearing of where you are. But it is in that blind exploration where Hollow Knight is at its best. It preys on the fear of not knowing. When you're down to one heart and you don't know whether a healing pool or a boss fight is around the corner, it ups the stakes and ups the excitement. If exploration gives Hollow Knight its intrigue, then the combat is undoubtedly what gives it substance. Your sword is your main attack, which you can strike in four directions. It may seem easy, especially when standard enemies are killed in a couple of hits, but the simplicity is its greatest strength. Congested groups of enemies, each attacking from different levels, require quick reflexes to take down. You also have a textured array of boss battles. You've got beefed up versions of regular enemies, You've got this weird ghost worm inside a suit of armor. You've got this crazy bitch that wants to kill you. You've got Bushy the Slug. Again, you're mostly approaching them with one attack, but each fight tests your agility and reactions in different ways. The underground caverns of Hallow Nest are home to a mixture of strange characters. Most come as a welcome respite when exploring, but even they are odd enough that I was kept on edge. In contrast, not every enemy is an immediate threat. Many are just minding their own business, nothing more than lost souls from another time. But they do offer you easy money, so you should definitely kill them too. Both friends and enemies add to the game's peculiar and fascinating atmosphere. The Underground Kingdom is pretty expansive, so unlocking fast travel points can save you a lot of time and stress. They can be expensive to unlock though, as are most things in the game. 
and it only takes a couple of bad lives to reduce your money down to zero. The option is there to grind through killing enemies to get that money back, but it will take a while. Then again, I'm not sure if this is a criticism of the game or just a note to myself that I need to stop dying so much. Both Ori and the Blind Forest and Hollow Knight have mastered their respective ebb and flow. Both let you go at your own pace, adding in new abilities at the perfect time to keep you interested. Both put a focus on engaging combat without forcing you to fight every enemy in sight. And both wrap beautiful stories around a lone, enigmatic and silent character. I cannot recommend either enough. So, I finally got some good experience with a 2D platformer. Like I said before, I have more experience with the 3D kind, so a game like Snake Pass should be an absolute breeze. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna snake around, don't you worry about that game. I'm gonna be the snake. Nothing but snake. Okay, doke. Get up there. Oh, this is, this is a fantastic start. Oh, our, our right triggers go. They could have told me that, but no, never mind. Yeah, this is this looks nice. Now watch this. See, what you gotta do is you gotta do the little wrappy here. Get your get your get your snake body ready. Around here, just a little, little one of those, and then drop the head under. Yeah, over we go. Over we go. Oh, 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 we go. No. All right. So what I meant to say was, you do one of these. You build up your, build up your snaking. You snake around this bit. Just a little snake. Yeah, you just rest that. Snake around here. A little bit more. Maybe one more snake. Sometimes I like to do just one extra snake there. And then kind of wiggle around. That's it. Easy. Come down. Oh, snake and turn. Alright. Assume the position. And we snake. We snake once. That's a lovely snake. It'll go around just once more, just for good measure. Yeah, that's lovely snaking. Okay, that's all right. Relax. We've done the hard part. All right. Now, now sneak up and around and and hold and hold and hold. That's it. No. Push, 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 push. Even out. Okay. Now we sneak around. Snake once. Alright, calm down. I know it's scary. We snake once. Oh! We snake once, we snake once, we snake again. We snake again. We move. Yes. Oh god, you've got to stretch. Okay, it's alright, it's alright. All the time, we keep calm. Stretch a little bit at a time. Alright, 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 alright. That does not. Out a little bit. Oh. Okay. 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 No. 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 Trick is to hold the snake and push his head up without moving forward. That's that's what they don't teach in snake school. Now hold. Now up. 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 All right, don't. Oh, you freaking snaking bastard! Ooh, that's that seems. No, don't let go. <laughs> no, God, don't let go. Oh no, 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 no. we're going under. this easier or am I just really good now? Not sure. It's hard to tell. Oh, oh. You know what? Oh. Oh no, you're going. Oh, 
stupid bird. If you just tease it round, there's no way you can fall. There's no way. Tease it round. That's it. Oh, yeah. Tease it. Tease it. Should I reach out? <laughs> oh, don't. Don't do me like that. That's, that's alright. Oh, you. Mm. No words now, only focus. Bird. Bird, what are you doing? Bird. Oh god. Bird, bird. Be cool. Bird, be cool. Say this, be cool. Say this, be cool. Bird. Be cool. Oh dear. <laughs> oh shite. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. Alright, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 Relax, relax, relax. Be the snake. Be the snake, be the snake, be the snake, be the snake. Be the snake. This is actually pretty fun for what I'm guessing is a game targeted at 10 year olds. Now that isn't the case for Super Lucky's Tale. This is probably more in the 7 and under range. As such, I don't want to badmouth it too much, but it's, um, well, it's a load of ass. Now, I could blame this on the sticky controls, useless double jump, or this inane decision to make the camera semi-movable while still constricting you to a 2D view. Oh my god, it just can't look backwards, it's the most annoying thing. Why have a camera if you can't put it all the way around? This is ridiculous. But that's nothing compared to the load times. The frequency of them is just unbearable. I was trying to complete this set of seven puzzles, but I couldn't get through them all because I spent more time looking at load screens than I did playing the actual game. Seriously. Okay. The, the aim is to complete the level quicker than the load time here. We're gonna add the beginning and ending load times together versus how long it takes me to complete the challenge. Go! Come on. Get out of the way. Waste of valuable time there. Go! Go! Not bad. It's gonna be close. Oh! Oh, it's gonna be close! I think I might have done it, you know, I think I may have won that. We just snuck in there. 
so load times ended up being about 10 seconds longer than the actual level, and I had to endure that 7 times over. Again, I don't want to complain too much as I'm not the target market for this game, but I said I play every game in the Game Pass library, so here we are. Hopefully we can have a lot more of this, and less of this, in the future. Thank <laughs> you.